embarking on a new mission. From Lubbock, Texas, with honors to the nation's capital. Arthur Estrada. A bit of mail to remind them of love from home. Anything that tied a soldier to home was the bright spot of their day. Army veteran Mike Horton says today's letters took him back to the days of mail call in Vietnam. And my daughter was nine days old when I deployed to Vietnam. And one of those letters was from her. And it nearly brought me to tears. And a welcome to Baltimore fit for these heroic men and women. But it was very nice. It was very nice. We surprised me. Wonderful. It's right there. Tags at the old heartstrings. The first stop at the World War II Memorial and the first wreath lane. That was quite an honor. So that's something you don't get to do every day. Coast Guard veteran James Belt laid the wreath in front of more than 4,000 stars. 100 service members who died represented with each. While Belk served in the Korean War, he said the thought of his fallen friends comes to mind. I really understood what we were doing and why. And uh, it's just a shame that we have to do this to remember those guys. But so easily we forget if you don't have something like this. And along the Potomac River, anchors away at the Washington Navy Yard. Your service never never leaves you. I mean, you know, and, and this renews your faith in Boston. And into the wild blue yonder of D.C. at the Air Force Memorial, a wreath placed by Ted James, an Air Force veteran who served in Korea. That was a, a super emotional thing for me at my age. He says this he dedicates to his uncle, who died flying in the South Pacific. He says for his family, service was not questioned. It's part of the job of being a citizen of this country. Mike and Marla Bryan also found military service among their family, husband and wife, who served in the Air Force during Vietnam. I got, I've been out of the Air Force for a year or so when she went in, and so, and we just got married. Now a situation reminiscent of their service, but in a more positive light. Veterans and spouses on this flight, and when they first swore to protect and defend our country. It was breaking ground, it really was. We both enjoyed it. Uh, I'm proud I served. And, and the uh, flight has been awesome. Yeah. It's great being with people who had the same experiences that we did. Like I said, yeah. they, they had the bad homecoming. And it's great that Americans are starting to respect yeah. our generation. It really is. Case Wilbanks, Fox 34, News at 9. A quiet and somber beginning to the second day with only the sound of the footsteps of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Outside of Arlington National Cemetery is the Women in Military Service of America Memorial. Everybody should know what the women did for the, all the people in, the, in the, all the different wars. The South Plains Honor Flight includes four women who served our country, including Vietnam-era Army veteran Marilyn Mabry. She says her service and that of her sister was simply her contribution and the commitment to her nation, a grateful nation. This is the biggest honor you can have. It just makes you, takes your breath away. I've been excited about this for weeks. The pride of the Marines was palpable at the memorial built in gratitude of their service. First time I've been here, such memories, and it just makes me proud to be an American and a Marine. Vietnam veteran Bobby Haynes says there's absolute truth to the saying that once a Marine, always a Marine. It's a vow to serve a country, a vow honored. You sign a contract with the United States to do what you're told, um, good or bad. Of course, it was good for me, and I'm, I'm glad to win. The highlight of my life. South Plains Honor Flight present arms. Phil Bodick placed the wreath beneath the massive sculpture depicting the flag raising at Iwo Jima, saying the moment was monumental 
as was his seven years of service. I was very proud of all that I did and uh, who I represented in our country, and that, that's important. And, and to be come back and to be part of a, of a ceremony like this, it's, it's really neat. And uh, it's something to experience, and I'm glad I'm here. At the new National Museum of the United States Army, the final wreath lane of the day. Korean War veteran Paul Hartman was selected for the ceremony. He says he's known to shed tears, so there was no stopping them today. I'm the most of it anyway. Oh, it's been. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. He took the steps forward bearing the wreath just as he bore the weight of his service. It, it's an honor. <laughs> and as the Army goes rolling along, so does the South Plains Honor Flag. The Marine Corps hymn plays atop the grounds of the Marine Museum, the final day of the South Plains Honor Flight. And inside the museum, the simulations become all too real. Watching that and listening to the sounds, it, it brought me back, right back to Vietnam. The start of a flow of memories returning to these veterans on this day, a day including remembrance for a war often forgotten, but not by Army veteran Kenneth Gentry. Hell. The hell he and others faced is sculpted into the Korean War Memorial, like the brutal winters. So I died bullets behind a telephone pole, I guess, that been around. And to see their sparks on the river rocks, it was something else. Gentry says an opportunity to place a wreath gave him a chance to reflect on what he went through and his buddies whose names are now on a new wall of remembrance. It was a great honor to me. From strangers, a word of thanks as the veterans proceeded across the Lincoln Memorial steps and a quick shout of where we're from. <laughs> Emerging from the grounds nearby, a wall with more than 58,000 names names the veterans slowly marched by on the way to place one final wreath. And I see these names and I, my heart bleeds and I know that God's got them. It just pulls out to us. What they did for us. Some buddies they never thought they would find. Oh, Bobby boy. It just happened, it's just right there. Other names brought some to their knees. 52 years later, a chance to finally say goodbye. It's Melvin Wink. I pulled him out of the turret of a tank. Army veteran Les Beatty says Melvin Winks was just 17 years old. But we lost about five that day. And a week later, we lost half of them too. And I can't remember but one name. I've been waiting a long time to dump this. Beatty profoundly grateful to place his hand on the wall and leave behind what he's carried for so long. Meanwhile, the Lubbock High, class of 69 as it's known, a group of Hispanic Vietnam veterans are taking names home for friends who served. But we all came back and thank God that we all came back. But back to a much different welcome than the one that awaited them at the Lubbock airport. Back in those days, it was spit on people, you know. This is, you know, all these people going way out of their way, you know, you just can't beat that. They made everybody, especially the Vietnam veterans, they made them feel welcome home. Home from the trip of a lifetime. I, I wish everybody got to go on one. You can greet your family! Death, death! Case Woolbanks, KCBD News Channel 11. There's arguably no other place where the ultimate sacrifice of American service members is seen so starkly. The rolling hills of Arlington National Cemetery, filled with markers of their final resting place. 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Some heroes may only be known to God. I lost some friends in the Korean War, so I really understood what we were doing and why. But others are known all too well. So easily we forget if you don't have something like this. This is, this is quite an honor for the guys that gave their all. For the living, showing honor to those who've died is a gesture of great importance. Some of my shipmates gave the ultimate price, and I think about them because they don't have grandchildren or great-grandchildren or those sort of things. So that, that part is in your mind as well. For some, a gesture of this magnitude came at age 93, a chance to honor family who never had the chance to live a long life. I had an uncle that was killed in uh, flying a P-38 in the South Pacific. We never saw him again. And this is for him. We went over there so they wouldn't come over here. And for the nearly 37,000 Americans and 7,200 Korean allies who did not come back home, they have a place on this new wall of remembrance. All gave some and some gave all. I remember that. Across the National Mall, the Vietnam Memorial Wall with 58,000 more names, more than just names to those who know them. Look in there. Look at all my brothers. That's what it means. Here it is. It's a reflection of great significance. We made it, but the heroes are right there. Heroes remembered, heroes memorialized, heroes gone, but never forgotten. God is taking care of us. They laid down their lives for this country to be free the way it is today.